Hi everyone, this is Tina Schmidt. Welcome back to my channel, Kingdom Walker 24-7, where we learn and become edified and we glorify Jesus, Father God, and the coming kingdom of heaven. Today, I wanted to do a little episode on what's in a name. What is in the name of the Savior that we love so much? Well, we know that he is the word and he is the alpha and the Omega, and everything in between. So let's take a look at Jesus' name. We know the Savior in English as Jesus. But his name, each letter in the Hebrew language, has a very special meaning. So in Hebrew, in English, we say Jesus. In Hebrew, it would be Yeshua. Okay? And Yeshua means the Lord is salvation, or Yahweh saves. That's what it means. So when we say Jesus, we are, we are actually confirming the word that says the Lord saves. And Yahweh saves, okay? The Lord is salvation. Uh, the uh, name of Jesus in Greek, uh, if we translate it, it's pronounced Isus, and uh, if we had to translate that in English, it would be I-E-S-O-U-S, -S, but it's pronounced Isus. In English, it would be Yesus, and over time, we have uh, translated it to be Jesus. Okay, so let's look at the Hebrew name uh, of Jesus, of Yeshua, all right? Now, in Hebrew, it's always written from uh, the right to the left, okay? So, if you're watching this video, it would be like this across, okay? The first letter is a little tick mark. It's the smallest letter in the Hebrew language. It's called Yod. And in spite of it being the smallest, it is very powerful. Yod means hand or work or deed. All right. It has the Hebrew language and the Hebrew alphabet has many meanings. Each letter has amazing meaning, symbolic meaning. Okay. So Yod is a tiny letter and it's shaped like a comma, like a little hook mark, a little mark. And so it's like a hand. And that means hand, work, or deed. The next letter is shin, the second letter in the name of the Savior. And it's got a straight line, and it's got like a little fork that comes off of it. Okay, it's called shin, and it means tooth, consume, or destroy. Now, it's interesting that he would have this in his name. But we'll, as you see, as we move on, you'll see how amazing this is to have this in the name of the Lord. The next letter, we'll get into each one of these, is Vav. V, we would pronounce it V-A-V, -V, Vav. Vav, it looks like a straight line, okay? It's got like a little thing on the top and a straight line. And this letter means hook, to hook or to connect, okay? And uh, it means, uh, it can also mean like a nail, to nail, to hook, or connect something. That's the third letter in the name of Yeshua. Now, uh, Vav also has two sounds to it. It can have a V, V sound like in the name Victor, but Vav can also have a U sound. U, like in book or look. U, okay? And uh, just like in the English alphabet, we have the letter H. Now, H in English is silent. It's just the air, okay? But we call it H. It doesn't have a A sound, and it doesn't have a CH sound. So even though a letter is called something, 
it may have a, an entirely different uh, sound. <clears throat> and so we see that with the letter Vav, it has a V sound, but also a U sound. It means hook, nail, or to connect. Now, the last letter in Jesus' name, or what we say Yeshua, is Ayin. If we had to write it in English, it would be A-Y-I-N. And this means the eye, or to see, or to understand. <clears throat> it means to enlighten someone to see. So the name Yeshua, if we look at Jesus' name in Hebrew, it means the work or deed that destroys, connects, and enlightens. Let's look at 1 John 3, 8. And this sums it up. Okay. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. And then what does Jesus do? He connects us to God. So he destroys. His work and his deeds was to destroy the work of the devil. And then he connects us to God. It means, remember, <clears throat> Vav means hook or nail, or connect. And he did all of that. Okay? He was hung on the cross with nails pierced to connect us to God. This is amazing to find out what his name means. And then he brought us enlightenment through his sacrifice. So, we're going to look a little bit deeper. He opened blind eyes and gave them a ministry, gave the people a ministry to connect people to God and bring them into relationship with God, demonstrating the heart of the Father. And he opened people's eyes. He opened deaf ears to hear. And after his re resurrection, he revealed himself to those who believed in him. And they began to understand the truth of everything he said. He brought light into their soul. So the name Yeshua, who we call Jesus, has significant meaning in his name. It's his whole ministry wrapped up in his name. Remember the Savior? He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega and everything in between. And everything that he says and does is wrapped up in his almighty Let's look at what Jesus gives us in his name. When he dwells in us. You have the living word in you and the living name of Jesus. So let's look. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so we would walk in them. The good works the good works, the good works that God has given you to do, they were prepared for you ahead of time so that you would just walk in to do it. It's laid out before you, laid out before you, just for you, to do this wonderful work for the Lord. And what is your work? It could be just talking to someone about the Lord. It could be lending a helping hand. It could be prayer. It could be all of that. Your good work as you walk through your neighborhood and pray for your neighbors, pray for the city, pray for your streets, that's all good work. It could be donating to a charitable cause. It could be helping. It could be doing anything and everything for the Lord as long as it's for his glory and in his name and you are walking in his spirit. You're moving the kingdom of heaven in you and through you. Because you have the Christ in you who is bringing the kingdom of heaven here through you. Again, Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship created in, in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so we would walk in them. So God had it all prepared for you, and now you just walk in it. Isn't that wonderful? I love that. It's about the ease of moving in his spirit. John 6, 29, Jesus answered about working for God. He said, 
It says, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he sent. That's God's work, is to believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit is what does that to you. That's God's spirit. The Holy Spirit living in you begins to open your eyes to the Savior. We can't change people's hearts, but God can change people's hearts. That's the work of God. <clears throat> this is the work of God that you believe in him who he sent. Let's look at, again, another scripture, Philippians 2.13. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. That's wonderful. It is God who is at work in you. Now, this is why I say it's with ease to do his work. Because if you are laboring and miserable to do his work, you're not in his spirit. Okay, you can have all kinds of very difficult circumstances around you. But when you move in his spirit, you will understand it from the kingdom perspective. You will understand it through his love, his grace, his mercy. Okay, and Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light. He had the heaviest burden in the whole world. And he said, take my yoke upon you, my burden is light. When you move in his spirit, all right, to do his work, it's a different experience altogether. It's amazing. Again, Philippians 2.13, for it is God who is at work in you, in you, to will and to work for his good pleasure. All right, so God will move your heart to do his will and his work. And it doesn't necessarily have to be religious oriented. We get so fixated uh, on religious uh, work that we forget that your daily life, your daily interaction with people, your daily compassion, your daily conversations is God at work in you. All right. So uh, we don't have an on off switch of, oh, now I'm going to get religious and start preaching and, and telling people all about Jesus and doing this and that because <clears throat> you might miss the moment. The moment a person looks at you in the radiation that you have of the Lord, and they begin to ask you, what is what is it that you have? And you say, I have the Lord Jesus. And he accompanies me, and I am always in fellowship with him. That's what you're seeing. And then, you see, you're bypassing uh, the religious byproducts, and you're just giving him Jesus straight up. From your heart as he emanates from you in this amazing love that he has for all people. Now, remember, we're still on that letter Yod. It's the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay? And it is also the humblest. We saw that with Jesus. It's the smallest letter, and yet it does the most work. And that was Jesus, very humble. Okay? In Luke 4.18... And Isaiah 61, 1 also says this. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Isn't that amazing? That's the work of the Lord. In his humble human body, God Almighty came to, to do this work. That summarizes Jesus' mission statement. Did you know that? Jesus' whole mission statement in Luke 4, 18 and Isaiah 61, 1. His work was revealed, uh, which Isaiah had uh, foretold and proclaimed. Let's look at Isaiah 11, 2. And we'd see the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. This is talking about the anointed one. Isaiah 11, 2. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. What is the spirit of the Lord? Well, it says it here. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Again, the spirit of wisdom. 
and of understanding, spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge the, and the fear of the Lord. Okay. All of that is the work. It's how the work is manifested in this spirit. This is the spirit of God in all of these different qualities that would be on the anointed one. And through that spirit of God, he did his work. And this is how the work is done. It is through the wisdom, the understanding, the counsel, the power, the knowledge, and the fear of God. Now, all of this spirit that is spoken about of Jesus in Isaiah, Jesus operated by to work the hand of God in the deeds of his ministry. Okay, so we see Yod, the first letter of his name, at work. Yeah. All right, the next letter is the letter Shin, which means almighty. Okay, it means also to destroy. It means tooth or to consume. And when the Israelites called on the mighty power of the Lord, he would go before uh, them and destroy the enemies of it. He was demonstrating the Almighty, his power. Now we read in Genesis 17, 1, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai, okay, walk before me. El Shaddai is God Almighty. I am El Shaddai, walk before me and be blameless. So here he was identifying himself as God Almighty, El Shaddai, all right? And so he had this letter Shin in his name. El Shaddai has the letter Shin. It's also, this letter Shin is often sometimes referred to uh, fire because the tongs on that letter uh, means to destroy by fire or crushing, okay, or grinding. And we do see a reference to this power of the Almighty when uh, we see in the scripture, it says, you know, we are are forged in the fire and refined like silver or refined like gold. It's associated with God's name Almighty. Even by itself, that letter Shin is associated with a uh, peaceful word. And, and it's interesting. It, it can be associated with Shalom or El Shaddai. That letter Shin is can mean the power to destroy or the power to have peace, to bring peace. Uh, that happens to be in the name of the Lord Jesus as well. So although he was wearing a humble body as a human, he also was the creator by whom all things were made. Okay. In John 1, 3, it says, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. <laughs> Shin is also seen in Jehoshua. Jehoshua. So in Exodus 6, 2 through 3, the Lord said to Moses, it says here, quote, God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, verse 3, to Isaac and to Jacob as God Almighty, that's El Shaddai. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. Interesting. He did not make himself, his full self, known to them. That's interesting because when God walked the earth as Jesus, he made himself known to us that we could relate to. All right. We're going to go on to the next letter, letter Vav. We'll go into it a little deeper here. Um, it means to connect. And the first time we see this letter is in Genesis 1, 1, where it connects the word heaven and earth. So Jesus came to bring heaven to earth. All right. He came to bring heaven to earth. He's the connection for that. And it, it also has, as I mentioned, uh, the hook on it. And he was hung on the cross. It also means nail. It connects heaven to earth through the sacrifice of the Savior. And upon his death, the tabernacle curtain was torn supernaturally from top to bottom, connecting heaven to earth and opening the sacred places of heaven and God coming to earth to men. Now, Mark 15, 38 says the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. 
Ephesians 2, 7, uh, 2, 14 says, For Christ himself has brought peace to us when in his own body on the cross he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. What Jesus did on the cross broke all the hostility. That is amazing. That is amazing. This is amazing insight given to us by Paul. And Paul had a ministry to the Gentiles, but also to the Jews. Okay. And remember, the Jews had rejected Jesus and hung him on the cross. But after his resurrection, he came back to prove what he said was true. And Paul continued the ministry in, into the Gentiles. And so he saw that Jesus was bringing the, this power, this wonderful God of ours, was bringing the Jews and the Gentiles together. But we are Christ's. And this is powerful. It identifies us with the kingdom of heaven. No longer identified on an earthly plane by our tribes and our races and our customs and our differences. It unites us as one kingdom in the kingdom of heaven. Romans 5.10 says, For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? In other words, what Jesus paid for us on the cross was our death. And now that he's alive and resurrected, how much more is that gift of life for us in the heavenly realms? And remember, you bring heaven to earth through you. You are the pent pegs. You're the red carpet that is rolled out for the Savior. And the world will cry when it reaches its most desperate moment. It will say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All right. But the world is going to go through some awful punishment first. Self-destruction by its own hand. Okay. Because they turned from the Lord. And we're going to see more and more of this. But what happens is we get so sick and tired of self. Right. That we turn to the Lord wholeheartedly. And this is when the Lord will come. Because he doesn't force us. He does not force us. We are free will people. Right. But you are planted here as a light and the salt of the earth. So people have a hope. Through you, they see the living Christ. If you will walk it. If you will do the work. Okay. And shine and be that salt of the earth for the Lord. In Luke 2.14, the angels came and announced glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. That was at the birth of Jesus. Okay, in Luke 12, 32, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. So we are no longer separated. We are united in his spirit, in his kingdom. Our identity then is in him, in the kingdom. That's why Paul came to a point where he began to change and shift his identity from his earthly persecuting religious identity when he was killing Christians. He changed and went through his transformation to now, what does he call himself? An ambassador for Christ. An ambassador comes from another place and represents that other place. Okay? We are ambassadors. We're no longer from this realm, but we belong in the kingdom of heaven in the spirit of the Christ, and that is what we bring here through us. So we are doing the work of the Yeshua, of Jesus. Okay? And this is so important. We're destroying the works of the enemy. All right? We are connecting people to God, as Jesus did. This is the ministry. Okay? These verses connect heaven to earth that I just read, which are found all in the name of Yeshua through the letter Vav. Right now, the last letter of Jesus's Hebrew name, Yeshua, is the letter Ayin, as I mentioned, and it means I or to see or to understand, to see with your spiritual eyes, to understand. This is enlightenment. Okay, Ayin has no sound. Okay, it also means perception, 
Okay? It's a spirit word. It has no sound because it's by perception. It usually carries a vowel sound associated with it, however. It's not a consonant. It's associated with spirit and the silent and invisible. It's associated with spiritual perception and insight and understanding. And it was Jesus uh, that gave us that Holy Spirit after his death and resurrection. He gave us, he said, I'll send you the comforter, the counselor. All right. This is spirit. And as he said to Nicodemus, you can't hear it. You can't see it. It's like the wind. You don't see where it's coming and going. All right. So that Holy Spirit, then, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is a different baptism than the baptism of repentance, John, the Baptist, had a baptism of repentance. Okay. Jesus has a baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at all together. Yod is the work of God. The first letter in Jesus' name, Yeshua. Shin is on the earth to destroy evil. Okay. Vav, to connect God to man. And Ayin, that's the, to bring the spirit of God to earth and give insight so people can receive his name and by his sacrifice, the spirit of God and be saved. So this is what Jesus' mission was. It is all there, plain to see, in the letters of his name, Yeshua. So now, when you think of Jesus' name, you will know so much more of the purpose and the power in that name. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Therefore, when you say, in the name of Jesus, you're destroying the works of the devil. When you say, in the name of Jesus, you are revealing the connection of heaven to earth and God's will on this, on this earthly plane. When you say, in the name of Jesus, all the enemy runs away and flees at the name and power of Jesus. The name of Jesus is almighty. It is the work and deeds that he did on earth and bringing in the kingdom of heaven. It is the defeat and destroyer of the devil. And the name of Jesus brings enlightenment to the soul, salvation to you, to me, and to the world who will receive him. Well, I hope you found this interesting. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega and everything in between. He lives in every letter of that alphabet. And I've looked up my own name, and I have found it to be very much in line with my life, my life for him. And would you please uh, like, subscribe, share, follow, and uh, continue to tune in. And we'll have more of this on the beautiful Savior, the coming kingdom of heaven and our Father God. Let's go into prayer right now in the name of Jesus and in the Holy Father. Father, I thank you so much that you have given us the Son. You are almighty and your Son is almighty. And we acknowledge and recognize that you are one in one spirit. You are one. And we acknowledge your sovereignty and power over our lives. Jesus, we make you our Lord and Savior and we receive you wholeheartedly and we follow you and we submit to you. Thank you for revealing to us the mystery of your name. It revealed the work and your ministry on earth. And thank you that you live in us. And now we embody the name of the Lord to do your work and continue your mission on this earth. As the Holy Spirit moves us and you live in us and we carry out the work to bring to light, to connect people to God, and you through your spirit and the work that you did on earth and by your word. And thank you, and we praise you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me. Come and join me again soon, and we will become enlightened and have fun and glorify Jesus, all right, and stay edified in the word. God bless you. Bye for now.